Alright, what's up guys? In this video we're going to break down a full head to toe. When do we do a head to toe? Um, if there's a significant mechanism of injury, some examples of that severe motor vehicle accident, a severe fall from three times the patient's height, um, a gunshot wound to significant areas, maybe several times if the patient is currently altered mental status or unresponsive, those are all indications for why we should perform a head to toe. Just imagine if you were to roll into an ER and they found a wound that you did not find. Um, so we have to do our own due diligence to perform a head to toe. Now, when in our assessment is we, are we doing this head to toe? It's gonna be after the ABCs or during the ABCs. So just keep in mind that you are not alone in this assessment. Your partner can be managing the ABCs um, while you're performing the rapid head to toe. And after the head to toe, we're gonna apply, uh, place the patient on a backboard, um, place the backboard on the stretcher, pop it in the ambulance, and then we should be on our way to a trauma center, okay? Um, so we're going to start from the top. Um, right off the bat, we want to visualize for any DCAP BTLS. Uh, just to remind you all what DCAP BTLS is. D for deformities, C for contusions, A for abrasions, P for penetrations or punctures, B for burns, T for tenderness, L for lacerations, and S for swelling. If you have any questions about that, just drop them below. Um, inspecting, visually inspecting the face, um, we want to see if there's any bruising. So bruising around the eyes is called raccoon eyes. Bruising around the ears, under the ears, is called battle signs. Both of these are late signs of a basilar skull fracture. When I say basilar skull fracture, that means the base of the skull has been fractured and blood is pooling in these areas. So these are very late signs. Keep that in mind. Um, we want to also visualize for any blood or CSF coming from the ears or nose. That could also indicate a skull fracture. So CSF is short for cerebral spinal fluid. Um, very bad sign if we see that. Open the mouth, maybe use your pen light to visually inspect for any broken teeth, blood, or vomit in the mouth. Um, you have your PP on, you're going to um, palpate the scalp. Um, don't forget under the, the head as well, and you're going to look for any crepitus and any blood on your hands. Um, and continue that with palpating the forehead, the cheekbones, the upper lip, and then the mandible. All right. So moving down to the neck, you know, and we're going to link link the packet um, down below in the description below, so you can follow along. And with the neck, visually inspecting. If you can visualize the trachea, the trachea should be midline. If you can't, you should palpate for the trachea. Um, midline. Look for any jugular vein distension or JVD, and both of these could be indications of a tension pneumothorax. We're going to get down to the chest eventually. So if we see tra the trachea being deviated, that means that there's so much pressure on one side of the chest from the tension pneumothorax that it's pushing the trachea to the other side. Fluid is being backed up into our circuit, and so when it backs up to the top um, of our head, we're going to see the presence of um, JVD. In addition to that, if there's any open wounds, you want to address those open wounds. Um, you want to palpate the cervical spine on the bottom, and uh, you want to notice any crepitus, deformities, tenderness, um, and any major step-offs. And uh, if there's any subcutaneous emphysema, and all that means, guys, is just like air is being trapped under the skin. So as you're palpating the skin, you might feel a snap, crackle, pop underneath. So there could be um, a pulmonary injury, and uh, air is leaking out from the lungs and it's being trapped under the skin. So that's just all subcutaneous emphysema is. Um, after we've assessed the neck, then we're going to apply the C collar. Um, and we have a whole other video. The link is going to be on the upper right hand corner for that. Going down into the chest, we can visually inspect. We should see equal chest rise and fall. If we don't see equal chest rise and fall, if we see unequal chest rise and fall, that injury is called a flail chest. Um, and the specific sign is called paradoxical movement. It's um, not normal movement in a way. And flail um, segment occurs when textbook definition is when there's two ribs fractured at two or more sites. And so normally when we inhale, our diaphragm contracts down and it creates negative pressure within our chest and our chest muscles expand and we draw air in but negative pressure is being created inside the chest. And so what those ribs want to do when negative pressure is being created when they inhale, the two ribs are going to suck into the chest and the, the unaffected side is going to expand normally. Um, that's called paradoxical movement. And all you would do for your treatment is provide bulky dressing, a blanket, abdominal trauma pad, and protect that flail segment from protruding too far out 
upon exhalation. Okay? Um, if you notice any open injuries, especially around this area, and you notice bubbling blood, that is called a sucking chest wound. Okay? So you have to notice the presence of bubbling blood. What you would do with that is you would take your gloved hand, occlude the bubbling blood, and then you would ask your partner to go grab a Vaseline gauze, and you're going to apply, and we have a whole other video linked on the upper right hand corner for that, um, apply the Vaseline gauze, and then apply the wrapper that it comes in, and that wrapper acts as an occlusive dressing. We're going to tape that on three sides, leaving the open side for air and blood to escape. Okay, so there's a whole other video for, for that. Um, we're going to take lung sounds, and hopefully we hear clear lung sounds bilaterally. If we saw tracheal deviation or GVD previously, we're going to be looking for absent lung sounds um, to confirm that tension pneumothorax on that one side. After um, that, we're going to start palpating. So I would palpate from the shoulders, down the clavicles, down the sternum, and then don't forget the ribs. Okay. Now, if you felt crepitus in the rib cage, you should be suspicious of possible further injury to the underlying organs underneath. So if a rib was fractured, um, these fractures can in the future potentially puncture an, an underlying organ, whether that's the liver, the stomach, the lungs, anything under. So be, be mindful of, of that. Okay? Going down to the abdomen, um, we're going to expose the abdomen and we're going to visually inspect for any swelling, any discoloration, um, and uh, any swelling around, or any discoloration around the flanks around this area, and then that would give us an indication of what could possibly be going on um, in those respective areas. After that, we're going to palpate um, once in each quadrant, just like this, noticing any grimacing, tenderness, um, and any of that. If we do see an abdominal evisceration, um, there is a video for that, link in the upper right hand corner right there. Um, we want to address that after all this is done, especially if the evisceration is not actively bleeding, it's not a primary life threat, we'll address it later on. It's a very distracting injury, don't let it distract you. All right. um, take bowel sounds real quick, um, and they should be normal in, all, every, in every quadrant, all four quadrants. Um, going down to the pelvis, um, look for decap BTLS again, but you're going to do two movements. You're going to uh, grab or, or I guess stabilize the, the hips, and you're going to do two movements. The first one's going down to the ground, and the second one is going into your hands, so down and in. And you're really testing for pelvic stability, and if one side gives, then that means the pelvis is unstable. Um, if the patient already told you that they fell and they might have broken their hip, we wouldn't be doing this, and we would actually use um, some type of uh, splint, whether that's a commercial pelvic binder or a sheet that you can wrap around to support the pelvis. You know, our, our, there's a lot of major vessels in this area, and another concern, in addition to the hip fracture, is blood pooling in that area. A lot of volume can actually pool in this pelvic area, so we want to reduce that potential volume by binding it. Okay. Um, Priapism or priapism um, is the medical term for an uncontrolled erection, and that's an indication for a for spinal trauma. So you might see priapism if they if the patient has a penis. Um, going down to the lower extremities, when you um, palpate, we're doing decap ETLS, but when you palpate, you're going to provide counter pressure. So my right hand is pushing this way, and my left hand is pushing this way, and you can rotate as you go down the limb, because if there was a fracture here, you would feel it and they would feel it as you go down the limb. So you go down both limbs, okay, and then you're going to come down here and do PMS, so you're going to check for pedal pulses, pedal pulses are present, you're going to check for motor, can you push down, can you pull up, can you feel this, can you feel this for sensation, um, and then you're going to go to the upper extremities, same thing, apply counter pressure all the way down the limb, do both sides, check for um, the radial artery and PMS in the top, can you grab my fingers, can you squeeze my fingers for motor, and then do you feel this, and do you feel that, okay, so that's upper extremities. This guy, Mr. Rescue Randy, weighs about 350 pounds, so I'm not going to log roll him, but we're going to log roll our patient and then assess the back for decap ETLS. I'm going to palpate down his spine, looking for tenderness, 
um, crepitus, any major step-offs. And if the patient was found standing or walking, take that opportunity to assess the back. Um, and after that, you know, follow your local protocols. If it calls for backboard, do the backboard. Um, if not, and they can follow commands, have them lay on the stretcher um, calmly and uh, assess for any other open wounds um, on the back if you know the, you found any open penetrating injuries on the front. Um, and that's it. I'll see you in the next video.